Um, and just talking about being prepared for a comeback, it's something that I wasn't necessarily prepared for. And I think that, you know, a lot of times in the past in 2008, for me, it was a, you almost hid, got scared. And I think that there's opportunities coming. And I mean, opportunities for, for us as agents, but also opportunities for us as agents to really shine in a time right now. Um, you know, the picture that I used, I've got a, uh, you know, this is from Southpaw and this is just from, uh, you know, when he's uh, Jake Gyllenhaal is just getting ready to go for his last fight and, and his comeback. And it's a, uh, it's a great movie. It's one of the scenes that I watch over and over again. It's just something that, you know, being prepared for that comeback and he worked really hard to be prepared for it. And I think that that's where we're at as real estate agents is that there's some things out there that we need to be doing that do not produce income right this minute but they are certainly going to produce the relationships that we want, you know, whether it be two months, 90 days, whatever it is. So um, here we go. <clears throat> so how you show up in crisis, how you'll be remembered. Um, you know, this is really important that everything that we're doing right now and how we're showing up in social, on the phone, on text messages, um, our positivity, our creativity, um, those types of things are going to make a difference in how we're remembered as agents. And if you're not doing those things, you're slowly going to be, you know, taken out of people feeds. You may even be forgotten about and somebody else is going to jump in and take over your spot if you're not staying in front of people during crisis. Now, one of the things I want to, you know, touch base on that a little bit is that, you know, we have to be careful. I've been very cautious in how I'm showing up in social. Um, you know, you have, you have one of two people right now. You either have the people that are scared to death and they're taking this quarantine thing to the nth degree with the mask, the gloves, um, you know, bubbles, all those things. And then you have the people that are probably a little bit more like me. That's kind of like, I'm a little up in the air about everything that's going on. Um, I'm not going to, and I guess it comes down to, we have a choice right now. We either live in fear or faith. And, you know, and I'm not talking about faith from the standpoint of your beliefs. Um, you know, that's one part of it, but I'm talking about, you know, do you have the faith to believe in that things are going to get better and that you're going to be, to be able to continue to work and make a living in what we do. And with that said, is that you first have to have faith and believe in where you're going and what you want in order to have the perseverance to persevere the current times. But if you don't believe that things are gonna get better and that the market is, um, is still good, there's still buyers, there's still sellers, and there's still a way for you to add value, you'll never have the, um, the perseverance to get through these next 30, 60, 90 days. And I think that that's really important that you, you take a, a mental health check on is that where you know what do you believe in what do you have faith in in order for you to have that perseverance to keep moving so here's what we're going to cover today the five must to be prepared for a comeback and you know the comeback is you the comeback is the market um and the the big piece here really just being prepared to really capitalize on your relationships and the opportunities to help people in this time. So, you know, first is relationships, resources, knowledge, facts, and creativity. And I think that these are the five really key things um, that, that I believe in and what we believe in in our business um, and what we're doing at Valentine Group on a daily basis. And if you notice, this is not a, you know, we need lead gen, we need all this other stuff you know, I've been doing this for 20 years. I lived through the upswing, um, you know, in 99, when I got into the business, um, interest rates were 7%. And I lived through the dot com bust through 911. And then through the severe swing in the market going up, and then the severe swing going down, and figuring things out. Some of the things that I wished I would have done better in 2007, 2008 was really keeping touch with my clients really keeping touch with my friends and really being in front of them on a regular basis, even when things were in chaos. And, you know, that's one thing that I learned. So, you know, let's talk about a few things before we get into those five things, just some points I want to make. 
you know, your thoughts become perception, your pe- perception becomes reality. You got to alter your thoughts and alter your reality, right? So you either have a choice to spend a whole lot of time in the negative media and what's happening, which is going to drive fear, which may become your perception. If you're perceiving fear, that all of a sudden becomes your reality. And I think right now, you know, if you're perceiving fear or in your social posts and your different things, if you're showing fear, your clients, your friends, your, um, your following may be um, feeling that, you know, it's kind of like a, a dog, you know, if a dog smells fear, they know it. And you don't want your clients and your following to smell that you're fearing what's happening in the market, because what happens is they take that on themselves as all as well. And then their perception becomes your reality as well. So we really want to stay very consistent on how you're being perceived and you're following. Um, you know, one of the things that I've been really consistent on in, um, in my postings and my videos and things is really driving gratitude and driving positive and driving things that I've learned from the past and things that need to be done different in order to help people stay positive. And that's, that's really very, very important right now that you're staying more positive. And it kind of goes back to those two different people. You kind of want to ride the line. It's all talking about politics. Um, you know, you can, you can push people away, um, or you can bring people on depending on what side of the fence you belong on. And same thing with the COVID thing. Some people are super fearful. Some people are a little bit on the lack side. So you want to kind of walk the line. And I have been very, very, um, lax with not posting anything. I don't want to see anything more about COVID. Um, you know, I try to keep up with a few things here and there. But I mean, our Facebook feeds, our emails, I mean, I don't think I see an email without something being mentioned about it. And, you know, not to say that I don't want to keep up with the current times and what's happening, but I also don't want it to create my reality of fear of, you know, the negative media and what people are saying. And, you know, there's also a lot of social shaming going on out there about, you know, the quarantine and staying at home. And, you know, we just need to be cautious with who's saying what and not to engage too much in, in that stuff. So if you haven't read this book, I highly recommend it. Um, if you want a cheater version of it, you can watch a YouTube video, which is where I took these pictures. Um, it's about 11 minutes long and it pretty much goes to the book, but the book who moved my cheese really, it, that's what's happening right now. You know, you have a choice. There's four characters. There's Sniff and Scratch were the mice and Hem and Haw. And you have a lot of Hem and Haws right now. So what happens is this book is that, you know, which I think is what has happened in our real estate market over the last 10 years is that, you know, the market has been easy. The cheese has been there. And in the book, they're talking about, you know, the four of them would get up in the morning and go to the cheese and they would eat and then they'd go back. But what happened was, is that Sniff and Scratch started to see that the cheese was starting to run out. So rather than going and eating in the morning, they went to look for new source of cheese where him and Haw finally got to the, the end of the cheese and realized we should have been doing something different. And so, you know, that's, that's what it's about. You know, one of the classes that I did kind of, you look at people that, that moved and looked to move the cheese early on. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, Toys R Us, Baby R Us in the early 2000s, they opted to stay out of the online space and they let Amazon do all the shipping for their stores and things like that. And eventually, I think it was three years ago, they went belly up because they didn't move with the times. Too much, uh, too much brick and mortar, not enough online shipping, not enough things there. And Amazon took over, which eventually really put them out of business. Um, you know, I think Amazon has put a lot of people out of business because they didn't shift with times. And it's the same thing that goes with what we're doing in real estate is that we have to look at ways that we need to shift right now, because I think we all agree that the market going forward is going to be different. Um, the economy is going to be different with how people handle things, how people handle showings, people that they, they want and don't want in their houses. So there's going to be a lot of shifts that, that are involved 
you know, moving forward, even when we come out and the economy opens back up. So we need to be um, consciously aware of that. And this is really what happens. Um, and this is what we have to be prepared for as real estate agents. Um, you know, change happens, anticipate it, monitor it, adapt to it quickly, change, enjoy the change and be ready for change again. Um, you know, look at, look at the last 10 years, we go from a down market to an up market to something that just jumped off a cliff. It didn't even happen gradually. So, you know, one of the things that I talk about in preparation for a comeback that, you know, I learned from, you know, from my mom and dad back in the days when my dad was working from investors was seeing the change and adapting to it. So in 2000, you know, 14, um, 15, when my dad was sick, got diagnosed with cancer and passed, I started to see some of the things he was doing and started to see some of the change and started to adapt to it as quick as I possibly could. And that's when we really jumped into buying investment properties and we started looking at opportunities and we started looking at what we're really good at. Um, you know, we're real estate agents. We know values. We know areas. Um, we know those things and we don't want to be unprepared for opportunities that are going to arise. Um, in the last five days, um, I've had multiple real estate agents reach out to me for some sort of solution for a client that doesn't want to put their house on the market, lost their job. They need a quick solution and we're going to see those as agents. And if you're prepared to take advantage of those opportunities, this is where, this is part of where you're going to build your wealth. Um, going forward in the future. So let's talk about relationships. <clears throat> it's, it's always interesting over the last couple of years where we have been fed so much about Facebook leads, lead generation, all these pieces, which is, is a minor part of what we do because those are the entry levels of actually being able to build relationships. But we, we have plenty of people in our database and people in our phone and if you've ever looked at your phone and actually gone to the contacts and looked at uh, how many contacts you have, I think I have 3,400 on my phone. Um, we have people that we haven't spent enough time building relationships with. And right now is the absolute key time to be building those relationships. And I'm not talking about sales calls. I'm talking about checking in with people, seeing how they're doing, people that you might know that are doctors and nurses, um, sending them, you know, it's, it's going old school to make sure that people know that they're still top of mind, you know, sending simple handwritten cards like we've done to some of the doctors and nurses that are in our past clients, um, just to let them know that, Hey, we're here. Um, we've got your back. If you need anything, please reach out to us, let us know. And <coughs> excuse me. And that is really, really important right now. And I think that we also have the ability because people are at home, they're in quarantine, they're not doing a lot they actually would embrace a conversation with someone just to know what's going on. And, you know, I'll get to it in just a minute, but we need to be armed with the facts and the knowledge to help people stay apprised of what's really going on, not what's going on in mainstream media. And, you know, we have the opportunity to build our relationships and those relationships, again, how you show up in crisis is how you're going to be remembered. So those phone calls, those text messages, um, those Facebook messages, all those things are going to equate to future sales and future referrals, um, maybe even relocations. So you really need to be paying close attention to your relationships in this current market. That is your relationships are your capital right now. And I think it's a great time in your relationships to be talking to people, you know, about, um, you know, you think about first time home buyers that might have bought a couple of years ago that have good equity. Is it time for them to maybe keep that as a rental property and, and move on to the next thing? And speaking of rental properties, just a quick, you know, blurb here. Um, you know, I was talking to my, my mom who runs the property management company at VSM and, uh, you know, we had almost 98% collection rate on rents this month. So it hasn't affected the tenants yet. It's going to affect some of them, but at this point, things are still really, really good. Um, and, uh, you know, we're super excited about that, that people are still working. They're still able to pay their rents and, um, it's still a great time to invest, especially when it comes down to, uh, rental properties, cause you're going to see some opportunities come up. 
resources. Resources are the key to being prepared for a comeback. And there's conversations that you could be having with people right now that are going to give you resources. There are resources for you to invest. There are resources for you to bring opportunities to clients that are thinking about investing. And, you know, this is where um, in 2015, I started having conversations with um with private clients that had money to invest as private money lenders, as partners, um, as joint venture on flips. So you want to really look at your resources and talk to people and have conversations regarding what they're concerned about. You know, do you have people, you have people right now that have pulled money from the stock market out of worry. They don't have anywhere they're getting a rate of return now. They're just sitting on it. And this is a time when you can jump in and start having conversation about, hey, you know, you've probably pulled money back. What are you doing with it? Have you thought about investing in real estate? Here's some different options. Um, this is the way we created, um, you know, our, uh, our war chest of funds. And I still have a war chest of funds with our investors. Um, they still believe in what we're doing. They still believe in the market. And a lot of our investors are actually extremely grateful, especially the ones that did self-directed 401ks where they rolled their 401k into um, self-directed, which gives them the option to direct their resources to an investment. And uh, we probably have a million dollars worth of self-directed money invested in real estate. And the, those investors are actually extremely grateful. You know why? because they lost zero value in their 401k and they're still getting a six to 8% return um, on their funds right now. And, you know, I know that the stock market will come back and all that's, that's fine and good, but these people never lost any value and they're still continuing to get the rate of return. And it's still um, invested in something of value. Um, you think about some of the stuff that that's gone to zero and some of the stuff that has tanked, and uh, it's, it's a hard time for some people. So your resources also are like my home group, the different classes, the different courses that are going on. You've got time to figure out those resources and, and learn more than just the typical representing buyers and sellers. You know, right now there's time to learn how to invest, um, what you could be doing, what you can be doing. And that's, that's really important in this time in order to be prepared so that you know, you know, hey, what is the rental market doing? What, what is the vacancy rate? What do the rents look like? Um, the other day I did a calculation. I know there's not a lot of $200,000 houses, but you can equate it however you want to. With where rates are at now in comparison to what they were um, a month ago, an investor can still buy a house, but actually increase his cash flow by nearly $200 a month because of the one point drop in interest rates. And that's, that's a really big deal to the investors. And you know, those investors are also going to be looking for opportunities. You know, if you're building a list of people that say, yes, I might be interested in looking at opportunities so that when one arises, you have a list to send it out to or people to talk to about it. There's, there's nothing worse than, you know, I remember, you know, early on in my career when a really great deal would come up and I didn't know who to go to with it. And you guys are going to have those resources or those people come up where they need a quick solution. So you have one of two things. You either have that list of buyers to where, you know, you've got a quick, quick deal or you have resources. One of those resources is me, um, which, you know, it's interesting. And I've got another slide down below you know, with the iBuyers going away, there's a lot of resources that have been taken away. You know, we are still buying houses. We're still helping agents create solutions. That's a win-win for everybody and everybody still gets paid. And it's, it's a resource. Um, so I just want you guys to know that, that I'm always a resource. I'm always available. Um, whether it come to, um, you know, something that needs to be creative, something that needs to be purchased, or potentially someone that needs a rental property. So um, just look around your resources and start factoring in, you know, who can be a resource either for money um, or clients or referrals. And that's one of those things that, that we really need to work hard on right now is those resources, because the resources are the things that are going to prepare you for future opportunity in the business. And, you know, I've always been 
really big on um, just creating the resource so that when opportunity comes along, I'm prepared for it. Because what happens is when you're not prepared for it, you don't know what to do with it. Now, oh, speaking of that slide, where did they go? Um, there was a really good call with uh, Dan Noma Jr. and uh, Kenny Klaus the other day, and they were talking about the iBuyer. So I wanted to give you a little insight into this just from that call that, that they had. You know, <clears throat> they've paused right now. They'll be back. Um, the, these big companies, um, they had to pause because of, you know, letting people in vacant houses and not knowing people's conditions and those types of things. And these companies are big targets as far as lawsuits and things go. So they did have to pull back. I think they're also, my opinion, um, I don't know what anybody else's opinion, you know, I don't know if they're going to come back buying as strong as they did with the retail numbers. This was always my fear and always my wonder is how do Zillow, OfferPad, Open Door, these companies that offer um, operate on such slim margins? What happens if the market shifts? Where do they go? And they're stuck holding the bag with how many houses that are now losing money, um, you know, with where they were operating at. So it'll be interesting to see when and how they come back and if their offers are as strong as they were or if they're going to you know, pull back, either their fee will be higher or they're going to be making lower offers um, with that same fee. But we just don't know where they're coming. Um, you know, I do know from that call that they all still have funding available. They plan on coming back, but it may just be different um, going forward. But right now, there, there really is no, no cash solution out there, you know, with this type of resource. And uh, even what I've seen on the back end with the wholesale market, um, you know, wholesalers, they write a contract and then they sell it for a fee. Um, a lot of their buyer pool has dried up. Um, a lot of their deals have gone away. I've talked to a couple of wholesalers this week. And so you're seeing where all the, you know, solutions that were available when the market was really good have kind of dried up. And that's where, you know, we've shifted is that we're still here. Yes, we're still being cautious of what we buy. You know, we're not going to buy on such slim margins as before, but you know, it's, it's one of those things we're still here and I still want to be prepared for opportunity when it comes down to it. <clears throat> so knowledge is a big factor in this, you know, in, in the comeback, you're, we're looking at market knowledge. Most of us have been on a Tina Tambor call. She's been on a uh, crusade over the last uh, couple of weeks. And she's had a lot of good information out there um, regarding the market and where we're going. Now, obviously, there's new numbers and it's all, it's all based on past. And, you know, we're waiting to kind of see what's happening. But we really need to keep up on the knowledge so that we can communicate very, very well back to the relationships of what's really happening. You know, I sent out a video this week um, to my past clients that, hey, the market is still good. People are still buying houses. It's slowed down a little bit. But, you know, we've had actually, I think, our, our best month in a couple of months, um, you know, in April as far as closings go. Now, a lot of that pipeline was built up in March before you know, the stay home order and all that other stuff. And, but we're still seeing multiple offers on properties under that 300. And you really need to stay in the know with what's truly happening in the market. And if you guys don't subscribe to the Cromford report, you really should just with the amount of data that's in there, because it's going to give you that market knowledge on how to guide your clients in what direction to go. And I think the knowledge also is asking the right questions for people. Um, you know, are they secure in their job? You know, where, where are they going? What are they heading to so that you can help guide them? And that's always been one of the big things that, that I believe is that we are truly a guide um, in this whole thing. Um, we're, we're not the heroes of the story. We're, we're salespeople, but the reality is sales equal guiding to point, from point A to point B. Some people need to be guided to stay at point A right now. Like, Let's sit on the sidelines. Let's see what happens, you know, but there's, there's no guarantee either way. And I think too many people in the 2007 market really tried to time the market perfect. And 
there is no way you can time it. And when you look at, you know, I, I talked to somebody the other day just about, um, they were like, oh, well, you know, the market's going to drop 10%. I personally don't believe it's going to drop 10%. I think we might get stagnant. I think you might have some people that get desperate and take some big price drops or some big, um, you know, less on the contracts when they come in because they need to sell their home. But when I look at it, if a buyer can physically afford and is secure in their job, a house right now, especially in that under 300 range, it's cheaper for them to buy with where the rates are than it is for them to rent. And even if, even if the house drops 10% and it goes against my opinion, you know, a $250,000 house, it drops 25 grand. It doesn't matter because their payment isn't changing. And if they had to go rent because the house dropped, you know, one of the things that happened in 2008 with, with our market then was that people had really crappy loans. Um, they were adjusting based on the market going down. Um, all of that stuff was happening. But right now, we have these great 30-year fixed rates that's keeping their payment low and affordable. And they don't want to miss out on that because if the prices do drop and the interest rates go up, they're going to be in the same boat. Yeah, they got a better deal, but they've got a higher, higher payment. And the value of the house only matters when they go to sell it. So it doesn't make any sense to hold off in our current market because we still have a low supply and the demand's gone down a little bit over the last couple of weeks. But it's really important that we are able to portray that through our knowledge to our clients and using certain examples. So I'll give you one that I always use is, you know, I bought my first house in 99 for $107,000 interest rates were seven and a half percent. And, you know, at 23 years old in 2004, when the market went up, I sold it for 200 grand. Don't ask me where the proceeds went. I was 23. So I'm sure I blew it all. And then, you know, up to 200 in the downturn, it was worth about 130, 140. And then it shot back up. And today it's worth 275. And had I let that ride out, I missed $75,000 worth of value and somebody else paying that, that house off as a tenant over the last 24 years. So I missed that opportunity. It's the same thing with people when they're looking to buy homes rather than letting them, you know, make fear-based decisions, which I believe that that's one of the guides that we are is that we're trying to help people not make emotional decisions and we're trying to talk them through and keep them from making fear and emotional based decisions. So really keep that in mind as far as your knowledge goes and being able to talk to the clients and talk them out of fear based decisions like holding back or, Hey, I think the market's going to go down. You know what? The market could end up going up. You know, we don't know and there's no way to time it. And people really need to understand that there's no way to time this. Um, that would be like being in Vegas, you know, knowing which number is going to come up next on the roulette table. Um, it just doesn't happen. It's just luck. Facts. Facts are key right now. Um, you know, knowing the facts regarding um, what's happening in the real estate market, knowing what's happening in the certain price points, knowing how to, again, guide your clients based on the facts that are happening not the news reports that are happening. Because what happens is the news takes the facts and they put them in one big bucket and they combine everything. And what we need to do right now is look at the facts based on the price points in the market. And that's one of the good things about the Cromford report is that it's breaking it down so that, hey, you can see the drop off in the million dollar homes as far as contracts go. I think we looked at it yesterday and the contracts over a million had decreased by like 50% um, in the last couple of weeks. That can be a scary thought if uh, somebody's selling in that price range and, and maybe they need to sell, so they need to go on the market, right? Um, maybe they don't need to sell right now, but it's still a good time to put it out there because you never know if that right buyer is out there that is waiting for the perfect home. Um, so we really need to stick to facts and not fiction uh, when it comes down to it. And the facts need to come from actual data, not from news sources, not from you know, Facebook. Um, I love it when people come in, did you see what was on Facebook? You know, it's kind of like that. Everything on the internet is true, right? So we really need to dive into the facts and make sure that, uh, we're dialed in there.
Okay, here is probably my favorite part of a market like this is creativity. And I'm talking creativity in a number of different ways. Um, let's, let's start at the top. Your, your social media, you have an ability right now to add some humor, have some fun, be a real person because people expect it right now. If you're still posting, you know, pictures of, you know, the, the glamour shots, not the glamour shots, but, you know, um, doing business as usual, people know it's not true because you're not really out there doing all that stuff. So it's, you know, what are you doing in quarantine? What are you, what are you eating during quarantine? What are you doing with your health during quarantine? Um, make a TikTok for crying out loud. Um, Mike at my office, my director of vision, um, he's kind of obsessed with TikTok right now, but there's humor in that. There's something that makes people laugh. There's something that makes people smile. And I think that's really needed right now. Um, you know, and creativity comes in a couple of different things. Uh, Kyle and Eden, uh, a couple of younger real estate agents that, that are with my team right now, they decided to take their dog and go video a home tour, letting their dog run around the house and show the house with video. They don't even appear in the video. It's just Kiva. And uh, that video, after we posted it yesterday, actually went completely viral um, just because they took a dog out and they added some funny clips to it as like the dog was talking to the audience. And that was ingenious and it made people smile and it was something different in our current market that people are not seeing. So you got to go way outside the box right now. Um, what we've done in the past is we've stayed very realtor, very sales, very under contract pending. And we've got to get outside that box and show the people that we actually are and be creative with it. Um, you know, some of you that follow me, I'm a super class clown when it comes down to it. I have no, no issue with being super personal and showing, you know, what I do on a regular basis, whether it be uh, slip and slide in the house or egg wars with my kids or whatever the case may be. Um, I think people want to have that personal connection. And that goes back to relationships. If people can personally connect with you, which I think is where Kyle and Eden went with Kiva, people are connecting with the dog. It's something different. It's not, you know, hey, look at my house. You know, here's the tour, blah, blah, blah. It's a totally different way. So I commend them for getting creative in a time where um, people are pulling back. Um, creativity also creates solutions. So I'll give you a great example. Um, even in this market, we were able to, you know, especially in the luxury market, um, we're at a time right now that uh, the luxury market is taking a hit more from financing options than it is from pricing and buyers. So we, uh, we had a buyer under contract on a $3.2 million house in Peoria. And uh, from the time we went under contract to the time it was supposed to close, they were going to do a prepossession on it or a lease option. Um, the financing went from 10% down to 25% down. And there's no end in sight in what's going to happen with that. Well, the sellers knew that they really didn't want the house back. Um, as far as going to market at 3.2 million in this price range right now in this market, it may be a while. And so we actually sat down and this comes back to the creativity and not being afraid of it. Um, we actually brought the buyers and sellers to the conference room table with both agents. And we sat there for four hours working out all the what if scenarios and being extremely creative to make it a win-win situation for both the buyer and seller. And at the end of the day, we were able to put everything together. There's some contingency plans in place and it was a way for everybody to win. And the buyer really wanted the house. They weren't quite prepared for the 25% down. Seller really wanted to sell the house. So we have to think outside the box. And some of you may have not been in the business uh, a really long time. There are a lot of alternate solutions to creating a win-win situation. Um, and again, if there's something crazy that comes up, that you're like, well, I'm not really sure about this. I just need the dialogue. Hey, this is, this is what they owe. This is what the buyer wants to do. This is where we're at. What, what can we do? There are a lot of creative solutions right now that we have to be aware of. And, um, you know, something my dad lived through for years 
in, you know, the late, late seventies, early eighties, when interest rates were 18%, you know, he didn't quit the business. He got creative. And when you get creative, you, you make more money because you're actually getting deals done because you have a mindset of solution and creativity than you do of, you know, holding back. Well, this buyer can't qualify. This can't be done. This one won't sell. So there's a lot of different creativity out there. So if you guys run across something that's a little off the wall and you want to have a conversation, let's have that conversation. I'll see if I can't help them some way, shape or form. So <clears throat> my favorite quote, I know kind of awkward, but Eminem says it, you know, you have one shot, one opportunity. Will you capture it or will you let it slip? So being prepared for opportunities in the comeback, all the things we just talked to are your opportunities. And the question is, while you're in quarantine, while working from our homes, are you, are you being lazy or are you at it 12 hours a day trying to figure out how to capture this moment and capture those relationships, build your resources, increase your knowledge, know your facts, and ultimately be really creative for your clients. So I will have Kelly open it up for Q&A for a few minutes. And I know that there's some chats here that uh, Mike's, Mike and Kelly are moderating. So um, Kelly, you gonna open that up? Um, hi, just wanted to bring myself back live. <laughs> sure, I mean, if anyone has any questions, definitely. You had some couple compliments in there and people sharing some conference stuff. So good stuff. Anybody wanna jump in? Yeah, I've, I've, I've thrown a couple uh, Crawford Report things in there, but some people aren't seeing it for some reason. I guess you can download it, though. You have to, you have to download it. Okay, good, good. That's uh, yesterday's Crawford Report. I mean, it's today, but, it, you know, obviously it's just uh, as of yesterday, all the sales and stuff. Right. Is it all opened up, Kelly? Just no questions? Um, I can unmute everyone. All right, well, everyone's unmuted now, so no excuses. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, now I hear kids, dogs, toilets. Bars. Might not be a good idea. <laughs> Should I call on someone? George Ann just asked something in the chat. Do that. Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, George Ann, you know, the, the best way to conduct showings right now or showing tour, I think is, is just asking the question from them is what they're most comfortable with. You know, are they, are you, are they concerned about, you know, contracting the virus? Are they concerned about, you know, do they want to wear gloves, masks? Do they want you wearing gloves and masks? And I think that's where we're kind of having a compassion based on somebody's beliefs right now. So we have to jump in and make sure that we are walking that line with the clients. You know, some people are, you know, a guy I met the other night, he's like, are you a handshaker? Are you chicken wing? You wear a mask? You know, you gotta be, you gotta be compassionate to what somebody's beliefs are right now. And I think that's the best thing to ask. And that's the things that we're asking before we're going out to house. It's like, Hey, how do you want me to show up? Do you want me to wear gloves? Do you want me to wear a mask? Be happy to um, comply to whatever your beliefs are right now in what makes sense. And I think that's the best way to do it. I think you can also do things with, um, you know, when it comes down to social distancing and things like that, you know, if the homes are occupied, you probably want to either see if the sellers are going to be there or if they can be out of the house. And, you know, you probably don't want to put a bunch of buyers in the car right now, just with the social distancing thing. Um, that kind of would be my suggestion. I would make sure that people are either following you or um, meeting you at properties rather than putting them in the car right now. Any other quiet people want to speak up? I guess everyone's killing it, Steve. Everybody's killing it. Steve, are you doing more holds or more flips? Um, we're doing, you know, it just depends on the number. If the numbers make sense on the flips, then we'll do them. We've really slowed down on our flips. Um, you know, that was intentional actually in 2000 or in, yeah, in, in November, December, we made the effort to slow it down 
more because I didn't want to get caught with a bunch of projects come election time. And now we're not even talking about elections. Um, the, uh, so we're still doing flips if they make sense, but you know, they, they really have to, there has to be a lot of meat on the bone to do a flip. If not, we still have a pretty good disposition team where they're disposing them as wholesales or making a little bit of profit without having to do anything with them. And then we're still holding some, um, you know, we did definitely pivot in this market because of making sure, um, you know, some of you guys have heard my goal, which is 50 homes at age 50, you know, free and clear producing $50,000 a month in income. But some of that's had to pivot. You know, we've had a couple of rental properties that have gone vacant that I've decided to sell because number one, they're, they're the golden egg in the current market and, uh, it's producing some cash. And I want to make sure that, uh, my employees are taken care of and, uh, we have enough to operate on. So that is one of the blessings of the amount of homes that we bought, you know, from that 2015 time period is we've got a substantial amount of equity in them. And there's some that we'll use just to make sure that for two reasons, one, making sure that the business can operate. Number two, that, um, Oh, sorry. Um, there was two points there. Number one, to make sure that the, the, the business operating number two is being prepared for future opportunities as well. Steve, you got a, a question there from Brock. Can you see the chat? Uh, yeah, let me get to it. Brock, my man. Yeah. So Brock, to answer your question, do I feel like, um, yeah, I, I missed a, a ton of opportunities in 2008, mm -hmm. partly because my head was buried in the sand um, and, and in fear mode and crisis mode rather than in opportunity mode. And I absolutely believe that there are going to be opportunities. And I, this goes back to relationships. It also goes back to relationships where I didn't mention with you know, like in my home group, I mean, I've had multiple agents from my home group know that, hey, I'm an opportunity seeker and you might not be ready to invest right now. You might not have the money. You might not have a resource to buy it, but you have an opportunity to make some money, you know, by bringing me in, you know, all the my home group agents that I bought, they're always getting paid a commission, you know, when I go in and buy something. And so, you know, Brock, I think that there's a lot of of opportunities right now. I mean, we just, we just had a house not too long ago. The lady lost her job and the house was in shambles and we ended up buying the house at 50 cents on the dollar and she netted exactly what she wanted to. And um, we were able to make a decent amount of profit on that, um, you know, just by selling it as is to an end user. So I think it's, you know, there's definitely going to be opportunities that arise and there's going to be people that um, think about it call that I got last night um, from an agent. She's like, this lady lost her job. She has some equity. She's afraid she's going to lose her equity. So she just wants to sell her house and cash out of what she can right now. And you're going to have some of that mindset and you're not going to be able to talk people out of that to hold on, especially when they don't have jobs. And if they're fearing, you know, the 2008, I'm going to call it a pandemic because that's what it felt like in 2008. Um, you know, in 2008, people lost a lot of equity really quick overnight, almost like the stock market. So now you've got people in fear mode of, well, I've got this equity. If I can get this price and get out, then I'm going to be safe. How do you feel about selling carryback at this time? That's another question. Um, absolutely. Um, you guys, seller carryback is going to be an awesome opportunity for some people um, to create an income, um, to sell a house, to create um, longevity. And it's a great way to pick up investment properties back to what, um, the other gal asked about, am I, am I holding right now? Hey, if I find a seller carry back at a decent rate, I'm going to hold it. You know why? Cause it's cheap money. And you want to, you want to quickly explain seller carry back. There might be some people here. I don't know that. Sure. Um, seller carry back is also considered seller financing. Um, you know, a lot of times depending on the relationship with that person or what you can, I guess, talk them into, a seller carryback is where somebody owns something free and clear and they become the bank. They become the first lien position against the property. So you buy it from them 
sometimes there's money exchange. Some people might require a down payment. Some people might not. Um, but a seller carry back gives you the option to buy a house with little to no money down, which I know I sound like an infomercial, but that's the truth. Um, you're giving somebody between a six and 7% rate, which is way over market, but it's still, depending on the price range is allowing you to cash flow on that property. Um, when you put a tenant in it or break even. And if you, whenever I'm buying seller carries, I'm really looking at, okay, well, if it was retail, you'd pay commissions, you'd pay closing costs, you'd have repairs, you'd have all this stuff. So you're working the numbers backwards in order to try to buy something on a seller carry at that 80% of value mark right now. And keep in mind, none of us should be buying just to buy. There's got to be some sort of opportunity or something that you're buying. You know, when I buy, I'm buying value. Um, I'm looking for equity. So if I buy something at 80 cents on the dollar at a 6% interest rate, even if the market tanks 10%, I'm still safe. You know, it, it doesn't make any difference. And it's a, a good rentable property at the end of the day. Those are the opportunities that I'm looking for. I'm not going to go pay retail for a seller carryback unless the seller carrybacks at like 1% or something, then it might make a little bit different sense. There's a number of different ways to, to move the, the pieces when it comes down to seller financing. Anybody else have any questions? You can type in the chat or just uh, unmute yourself and speak up. Can I steal the dog open house idea? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Knock yourself out. You can steal anything you want off of Facebook. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, just so you know, I don't know if anybody can see that. I stuck that screenshot in there for some reason. I was texting with Brock, and he can't see it. So if anybody wants uh, some screenshots off of Crown for Report, put your email in here, and I'll send them to you. Um, and and also, I stuck some links in there about uh, signing up for uh, some of Steve's stuff. We'll send you some emails on that, too. Um, Brock is my head colder now that I been <laughs> shaved. Um, no, it's... Uh, this was the result of quarantine games with teenagers. So Wendy was giving everybody haircuts and my youngest said, can I shave your head? So, okay. So that's what we did. So I let him do it. And uh, so far my wife is saying, well, maybe you should keep it for a while. So here I am. All right, guys, I appreciate you being on and hopefully the information was helpful and, you know, really, go through and follow the the stuff that I talked about. And um, I think the biggest thing is really, you know, staying true to your relationships right now, super important. And I don't just mean relationships with clients. I mean, relationships with each other. Um, this is, you know, one of the things that my home group has been so awesome with is just our collaboration and, you know, together we can do more, we can win better um, and make it better for our clients and ourselves. So Guys, I'm here if you need anything. If something crazy comes up, this is who you call. Um, I, I do the crazy train all the time. The broker still lets me. <laughs> Bye, guys. Have a good day. Thanks, Steve. Welcome.